Welcome back, Pokemon fans. My name is Angel of the Night 091, and today we've got a Pokemon Sword and Shield Wi Fi battle found on the 2022 2021 battle code. The battle is versus Michael today. If you enjoy the battle, be sure to sub, like the video, and post your comments. Without further ado, let's get into it. All right, guys, let's get into the battle. Uh, first thing I want to say is I tried to commentate this battle so many times and I goofed up so many times. But we are going to get into the match here nonetheless. Our opponent has a Zorora, the mythical Pokemon that can be found through Nintendo event or through Pokemon home gift codes. We're going to lead off here with Tulk. Now, Tulk is a Perserker. Uh, definitely a steel type Pokemon. Evolution of Galarian Meowth. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm really, really, really excited about this Pokemon because this Pokemon has some wicked beard game. Okay, wicked beard game. That Pokemon is awesome, love it. So we get the fake out, we flinched the Zorora. The next turn, Zorora actually managed to get a close combat off first, which is not surprising considering how fast that Pokemon is. But you know what? We were able to survive and we were actually able to retaliate with a double edge. Now, with that being said, we were able to knock out Zorora. Zorora is no longer a threat, which I'm super pumped about. The next thing that happens is the Tapu Koko. Tapu Koko comes onto the field, and the first thing I notice is the name of the Pokemon. Now, all I have to say to this is, Michael, you best not be buying Pokemons, Michael. You best be getting out there and ev training your Pokemon, Michael. Luckily, uh, <laughs> I don't have to battle this thing right now. It actually did a Volt Switch. Actually took out Tulk and comes into Ice Rider Clayrex. Now, Ice Rider Clayrex can be a big problem onto a team, uh, definitely to face. It can be one of those Pokemon that can be quite challenging to battle if it is used properly. Now the only way that I could actually determine a way to take it out would be to go in with my Colossal and go for the Gigantamax. Now Gigantamax here, we're going to go for the Max Flare because that is definitely the best option for us right now. We want to do as much damage to this thing as possible. So right now as it is, we are locked in. The Ice Rider Clayrex goes for Future Sight. Now I don't know about you, but I don't know very many Ice Rider Clayrexes that go for Future Sight. Do you guys find that Future Sight is a Future Sight? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm losing it. Future Sight is one of those moves where I do not see the value in unless you absolutely need it later on, okay? If you know there's going to be a Pokemon you can't take out, but this one last final move might do the job, yes, Future Sight is fantastic to use. Um, post your comments. I want to hear what you guys think on Future Sight. Now, we were able to knock it out with the Max Rockfall. Uh, I think it was Max, no, it was uh, Vocalith. So we actually did the Vocalith, we got the rock set up so that way it's an entry hazard. It can only be done if you do Gigantamax type moves. So we have one more attack here to go for uh, in our Gigantamax uh, stage. We are gonna go for the Max Knuckle. Now, Urshifu is one of those Pokemon Again, can be a threat only if it was Dynamaxed or Gigantamaxed. I really don't feel like this Pokemon is much of a threat outside of that, but that is a personal opinion, guys. He's gone for the Surging Strikes. I have Steam Engine. Steam Engine is actually going to boost up the speed of my Colossal. And you know what? We were actually able to survive primarily because of the fact that we are Gigantamaxed. If we weren't Gigantamaxed, that would have definitely knocked us out. Now we did the max knuckle here. Uh, Halvard has raised his attack power. And then of course now we are now hit once again. So future sight, there it is. I think that was future sight, if I'm not mistaken. That's the only thing I can think of it being. Um, the rocks 
have been taking a turn onto the Urshifu. This basically goes every turn, which is awesome until it wears out. Now, unfortunately, we've gone back into our regular size, our regular form. We're going to go for the body press here because really and truly, like if I went for a fire move or a water move or anything like that, it's really not going to be effective. So we did that. We are going to hit with a retaliated close combat to the face. That is unfortunate that we are going to lose Colossal here or Halvard, however you want to uh, call them here in this match. Um, <laughs> but you know what? We actually did quite a bit of work here. We actually managed to do quite a bit of damage to two Pokemon in this match so far with Halvard. So we're now going to go in with Erling. Erling is my Rillaboom. Uh, we're going to go right for the fake out here because we want to basically take away that first turn attack with the Urshifu and it actually knocked it out, which is actually very helpful for us. Now, the sun has faded, so now uh, water type moves uh, will be back to normal. Fire type moves, of course, are not gonna be boosted. Now, the next thing is he comes in with Necrozma. Now, Necrozma, I'm not too concerned about. I have Darkest Lariat onto my Rillaboom. That is super effective, type advantage for the win. So we knock out the Necrozma, Necrozma goes down. Next Pokemon coming in is the Terrakion. Now, Terrakion, of course, is one of those bulky type Pokemon, which is capable of dishing out some super physical attacks. So in comes False Swipe. What? Okay, so False Swipe is in. It doesn't do a lot to Erling or Rillaboom. And uh, we're actually able to hit it with a wood hammer here and knock him out. Okay. So with that being said, we are down to the last and final Pokemon on Michael's side. Um, <laughs> in comes the Electric Surge again. Electric Surge, uh, it might help him out here with boosting some of his attack maybe, I'm not sure. Uh, we could go in for another Wood Hammer. We could go for the Earthquake here. Earthquake is probably the best bet in order to try to take on this Tapu Koko. So here we go, Earthquake coming into the battle, taking him right down into the red zone. And I'm gonna be honest with you here. It was a super effective move, but I'm really su surprised that it actually survived that hit. So unfortunately, we get hit by a U-turn here. Tapu Koko has nowhere to go. It is stuck in this match. So in comes Liv. Liv, you are an awesome Pokemon. I really wish I could have Gigantamaxed you here in this battle, but there was really no option for me to do so. So the last turn of the battle here, we are gonna see a Dynamaxed Tapu Koko. And you know what? It's not quite as epic as its Z-move, uh, Island Guardian. I know you guys know what I'm talking about with Island Guardian if you guys watched the Alola series. So in comes the final play here. There's the Max Starfall coming from the Tapu Koko. And of course that is gonna hit onto Liv. Liv is gonna be able to survive by 31 hit points, which is awesome, even though that was a crit. And uh, you know, the battlefield uh, gets all kind of funny, kind of funky here. Uh, we're gonna attack with Mystical Fire because that's really the only option here. So that is going to be game. So good game, Michael. Um, maybe look into doing some Ev training, maybe getting some of your own pokes. I don't know. But GG nonetheless. Thank you very much. If you guys enjoyed the battle, you guys know what to do. That's right, guys. If you know what to do, hit that sub button, post your comments. I would like to hear from you guys today. Tell me about Future Sight and how you would use it. Check out the other battles listed above, and if you enjoy them, make sure you sub. I'm Angel of the Night. Catch you guys next time.